So I'd like to thank the organizers for this kind invitation and opportunity to describe our results. So I will tell you about uh, joint work with uh, Kai Friedberg and Ginsburg. Uh, talk about integral representations, doubling method from uh, the linear case to the uh, covering case. So as with, I guess, uh, the same as when I bake uh, cookies with my daughter, we always start with the recipe and it starts with a list of ingredients. So I, I took the initiative and wrote down a list. Now, of course, these ingredients uh, will describe the uh, our the doubling uh, construction, but it's uh, there are numerous uh, integral representations, and they all start with basically the same list. So let me just go over it quickly with uh, my notation. So we have uh, f a number field and a ring of Adels, and we'll have n and k two positive integers, and throughout I'll set c to be two n, and g will be the group SPC. We have the group H, a larger symplectic group, and then we choose a Ziegel parabolic subgroup P. So the Levy part is isomorphic to GLKC. And then we have a cuspidal representation, irreducible automorphic cuspidal representation tau of GLK. And uh, we construct the Spe, E tau, the Spe representation of tau. Uh, so we basically take C copies of tau, we take the residue, and we obtain a representation of GLKC. And now we can construct the induced space from P to H, and we have here the determinant S minus half and the Spe and F will be a K-finite standard section. And now we can define the Eisenstein series, which is the sum uh, over H, F modulo P, F. And that's one part of the construction done. And now we'll describe how a G comes into the game. So we choose another parabolic subgroup Q, and the Levy part here is isomorphic to K minus one copies of GLC, then SP2C in the middle. We fix some uh, atomorphic character psi u over the unipotent radical ua, uh, which just means it's trivial on uf. And then uh, if we choose it correctly, we can embed the direct product of g times g in the stabilizer of, of psi u in the Levy. And for that, I'm introducing some notation. Maybe I'll use it later. e1 g will uh, denote the embedding in the left copy, and e2 g in the right copy. And now that we have that, we can, of course, consider the uh, Fourier coefficient of the Eisenstein series along u and psi, oh, psi u, which is almost by definition an atomorphic function on the direct product. Now we choose some, or we take some cuspular representation pi of g, and we take two cusp forms in the space of pi, and we have this outer involution uh, of SPC iota, that we need for the definition, and now I'm just defining the integral. So Zs phi1, phi2 of nf, that's the global integral. So this is, um, any, any integral would look uh, pretty similar, but this is the case of the doubling construction for an arbitrary k. So um, this is the extension of the doubling method, doubling integral of Piotrowski, Shapiro, and Wallis from k equals 1 to any k. And what can we do with this integral? So of course, for plenty of things. Of course, for k equals 1, this already had uh, numerous applications, maybe most notably to the theta correspondence and uh, several authors that were involved, to name a few, um, Kudla and Rallis and Lapid and uh, Yamana and um, probably for, uh, yes, of course, and, and, and Gan and uh, Savin, not just with the, uh, the I'll mention it. So not just for the um, theta correspondence, had several other applications, but our motivation was different, was more related to functoriality. Um, so from now I'll um, concentrate on, on, on that extension. So we have, uh, so K is, is arbitrary. Yeah, it, it comes out in the computation. It's just the way you define uh, the groups and the embeddings and everything together you need. You just get it in the stabilizer. Sorry? It had other things. 
Yes, so it has another parabolic subgroup and another. Yes, I will show you just a simple comput computation. You will see that the step is. Okay, so, uh, so what can we do uh, with this uh, global integral? Well, we can uh, start with an Euler product. So an Euler product would look like that. Z equals the restricted L function of pi times tau divided by some L functions depending only on tau that come up as the, in the normalizing factor of the, of the Eisenstein series. So I'm not going to write it down. And a finite product of local integrals over some finite set S. So um, the properties of the denominator are already known. And we know that the integral admits monomorphic continuation. We can deduce that the, L func the partial L function admits monomorphic continuation, granted that we have some very basic properties of those local integrals. Over periodic fields, this is really bas very basic. You have to know that you can choose data for which the integrals become constant. At Archimedean places, this is more subtle, but you just settle for that. So, of course, we don't really need all that construction just to deduce monomorphic continuation of, of the partial. L function, this is known by Langland's uh, constant term method. Sorry? No, I'm just saying monomorphic continuation, Langland's constant term method doesn't need the global genetic. So, the secret, well, no longer a secret one, so I'll be done. Local theory. So to improve, the secret is to, to understand the lot to describe the local theory of those, in, of those integrals. And this is usually, it usually means understanding the analytic properties as manifested in the gamma factors. So we can define gamma factors and um, let me please use local notation. So I'm, not, I'm going to omit those places nu. So one way to define the gamma factor is by pro proportionality between two integrals. So z is the local integral, and z star is a similar in integral obtained from z by applying an inter a local intertwining operator to f to the section. And what I'm hiding here are additional constants, normalization constants, more delicate. Um, so what we can see here are uh, central characters of tau, sometimes of pi depending on the group, and sometimes some constants like the absolute va uh, value of two or other things that come, global constants that come up. And of course, those gamma factors are characterized by a list of properties. Which is due to Shahidi for the generic case. And as was already said, uh, in Shahidi's talk, for example, the most important property is multiplicativity. I will just write multiplicativity in the second variable. It looks like that. So um, here tau 1 and tau 2, this is the bernstein zelevinsky a product functor, just a parabolic induction. And uh, another property which I would like to point out is uh, what happens when we twist the character by some a. Well, we get out some 
power of the central character of tau and maybe some power of the absolute value of A. And what matters here is that when we take a global product of these factors, um, then they, van they become one. And this means that we can define a global epsilon factor which would be independent of the choice of set. So uh, this leads to the third bullet. So now we are going to be using gamma to define L and epsilon factors. And once, and once we have that, we can define the complete L function. And then it will satisfy a functional equation. So granted one, two, three, and some help from friends, we can prove functoriality. Let me just mention Closel, Shahidi. Dima Gurevich, and Of course, one can argue that uh, with some help from friends, you don't need one, two, three, but okay, we, we need it. Um, so what happen, whatever happens, just don't let me write yeah, don't let me erase anything from that side of the board. So the theorem is, of course, that pi has a functorial leaf to GLN with the proper N. And by that, I mean um, so we have the correct leaf at all the unramified places and all the Archimedean places. And in the remaining places, we have so the leaf is determined up to the supercuspidal support. And we do that for the groups, not just uh, SP, SO, and GSP. So of course, in the globally generic case, this was proved by Kogdel, Kim, Pietetsky, Shapiro, and Shahidi, then for G-spin by Asgari and Shahidi. And uh, now there's no, 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 there's an alternative method of Arthur and Mock. So they uh, proved, and they proved, of course, uh, much more um, for the symplectic and orthogonal groups and Mock for the unitary groups using the stable trace formula. And I should, yes, I should uh, probably mention the original, but it comes up uh, with questions. The, the original doubling method uh, included the uh, um, slightly different class of groups. We focused on these groups, but this can be extended. And, and I know that, uh, so Melissa Emery was doing uh, G-spin with the, the classical, just K equals one case in her PhD thesis. Um, Quasi split and, and Amir Kumar Mondal is working on the quasi split uh, case of SO. But there's no reason not to uh, include all groups. G spin was important to me because that's a result when we have that, that's um, the, the trace formula at, at present does not apply to G spin, that's why. So uh, maybe a few remarks.
So um, first, of course, there are uh, numerous other integral representations that do not require globally generic representations. I can mention several authors that were involved, Ginsburg and Rallis and Sudri and Diwa and, and Lei Zhang. So for all these constructions, if one really sits down and writes the local theory and defines the gamma factor at all places and proves all the properties, then essentially one can obtain uh, similar, a similar factorial lift, again, using the converse theorem. So the point here, the, um, the new part here was the uh, study of the local factors at all places. Now, um, maybe this the doubling construction is perhaps a bit more appealing because it is uniform in the sense that it does not depend on whether n is smaller than k or bigger than k. Several other constructions. We use a new, a new class of models, KC models. They extend for, uh, before defining or saying uh, something rough about those models, for C, K1 are just with a K. And for C equals 2, we get something which is uh, C. So the model is uh, related to the Shalaika model just without the reductive part. And um, so here is one example, the, represent the degenerate principal series representation fully induced from maybe two characters. Let's say we have uh, chi 1 and chi 2 quasi characters of F star. And we consider chi 1 times the determinant of GLC and parabolic induction chi 2 times the determinant of GLC. This would be a typical um, 2C representation. And for these models, we obtain uniqueness. Uh, one delicate part was, over, was at Archimedean places. As I mentioned, you have to understand the gamma factors at all places. And here we have uh, several recent uh, very strong tools of uh, Eisenwood and Gurevich and Sahi and Gomez and, and uh, several others that we used. So one of the results, it's, it's pretty delicate of Archimedean fields, is to really prove that uh, such a representation is, is a KC representation. And so maybe later I will define, maybe not, uh, KC representations. But let me just mention that Yeah, so um, a very delicate part of the work is to obtain precise uh, normalization factors for gamma. So I was hiding them, and I'm still hiding them, uh, those factors in parentheses that uh, give you precise multiplicativity. OK, so uh, if there are no questions, I can just uh, go on and discuss cover groups. Good. So now I understand that uh, uh, Paul talked about covering groups yesterday, so I'm not the first one, but uh, I was asking, asking uh, Witek if it's appropriate that uh, I'll describe covering groups uh, just the last day of the conference. After all, the, if you look uh, online, you will see that the fourth uh, bullet in the program is covering groups, but 
we just get so at least now we can say that covering groups were included. Um, so let me just start with a few basic definitions and then I'll describe what we do. So um, G was still uh, was already defined by a covering group. Here I mean exact sequence. So um, mu m is the m nth fruits of unity, and we are assuming they are in F star. Uh, local and global, and these are really central coverings, so the embedding of the roots of unity is contained in the center, or here I should probably write center like that. And uh, we have, these are topological extensions, so the quotient is isomorphic to G <coughs> as a topological group. And with this notation, it is sometimes convenient to realize uh, the covering group of G as a direct product with uh, a two cos cycle. So let me write the notation. So we have as a set. And we multiply using a two cos cycle. So um, I understand that uh, Paul wrote down the definition of two cos cycle. Let me just mention that uh, we are working working with topological groups, and uh, so this is a Borel measurable two percent. And as we all know, extensions are classified by uh, H2. which is the quotient of the group of two cross cycles by the group of two co-boundaries, Z2 modulo B2. And our goal is to understand the theory of genuine representations of coverings of G using um, representations of some of the appropriate GLN. And the method uh, we use will be obviously to construct L functions. or really what we will probably be doing in practice, gamma factors. Okay, so I guess uh, you were going to let me erase the board, but I'm not going to do it. So um, 
let me write a few general observations referring to coverings that enable us to extend all this construction to covering groups. And of, of course, those observations are known. So first, if we have a subgroup um, L of H, then we can always define a covering of L by restriction. However, it is a very delicate question what covering we actually get. So unfortunately, or fortunately, the, uh, the covering we get will depend on the embedding. So for example, if we embed, say, um, GLN in GL2N, we start with a covering of GL2N, and uh, we look at these two isomorphic groups. So G is in GLN embedded, okay. Yeah. So we can, can embed it, for example, using two ways. Now we look at the covering. The coverings are no longer isomorphic. It is very important to describe the covering precisely and identify it with the actual embedding we are using. A second point, of course, GM locally or locally and globally splits canonically over unipotent subgroups. Third, which is more subtle, The covering over the Adels splits canonically over GF. And why is this more subtle? Because here we have to use the fact that GF is perfect. So it doesn't matter what covering you fix, if you work with bylinsky delin coverings, or coverings of Moore and Matsumoto and Steinberg, as long as you're not if, if the group is not perfect, that this is not canonical. But in our case, it is, at least for G. In, in the abstract sense, uh, perfect, not topologically perfect. So G, G, this is just SP2N, right? And, and the field is infinite, so there's no Uh, the reason is once we fix once we fix the two core cycle, then um, to say that it is split canonically means that we have an embedding, a continuous embedding, <coughs> say from in this situation from GF to the covering. And if we have two embeddings, of course they have to uh, keep the first. They, they have to. Um, so such an embedding has to be compatible with, with the projection they have to be, uh, I, I, the identity on, on, on G, then you would get two splittings would give you a homomorphism of in this uh, GF into mu n. So if it is perfect, it is unique. And if not, it is not. And four, because we are dealing with central extensions, we, ha we know that G acts on GM, but it doesn't mean, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't tell us, uh, so if we can have an action, uh, a linear action, which does not, for example, lead to an action on the covering. So um, a linear action, may or may not lift and uniquely or not uni or non-uniquely 
I usually hear uniquely because G is perfect. To the covering and even if it does, so if it does, it still, it can, uh, this lift may, might factor through G or might not. So one well-known consequence of that is that uh, the pre-image of a maximal torus in G is no longer abelian. Or that the direct factors of a Levy subgroup, the pre-image in the covering does not commute. And on that, because of that uh, particular reason, there is no, um, so the tensor construction does not uh, extend immediately to covering groups. And on that, there were um, several works by Cable and Metzo and Takeda on extending the, uh, the tensor product to, um, to coverings of, of GL. And the last observation I'm going to use is a local relation between unramified representations B6, Okay, so uh, what I have here is a certain local correspondence between unramified representation. So I, I'm starting with G. Uh, so we have this denotes um, an unramified principal series representation. And you, you can think of it as the linear part. So it would typically be um, a product, just a, an unramified uh, character of the torus. And uh, nu, uh, nu is a certain... Uh, is an additional parameter, so for some cases of coverings, this would be a veil factor, and sometimes it does not really matter, depending on, on M, uh, depending on the degree of, of, uh, of the covering. Uh, I haven't made sure of that. And what you see here is the same unramified uh, on the group, the same uh, unramified principles here, except that I'm raising the characters to the power some R. And we have a similar, uh, similar picture for GL, except that I would like you to note one relation here. So we can start with an unramified principal series of a covering group of GLK. And it turns out, and this was an observation by Suzuki, if we, uh, we can expand, uh, we can blow up the construction uh, from GLK to GLRK and construct representations which admit unique Whittaker models. So I'm denoting this theta v chi so that you will know that theta is the exceptional representation. Just think of the veil representation. Nu is the same parameter and chi is the linear data. That's all you need to know about. So a Whittaker model for us is RK1 model. I have 15 minutes, say, more, right? Because we started 11.30. Okay. So with that, let me finally use this part of the board. With those observations, let's try to extend the doubling construction to covering. So first, we need M. M will be, oh. M will be the degree of the cover. And we are interested in studying 
coverings of the symplectic group. They are um, non-unique, but once you fix a Steinberg co-cycle, for example, using the Hilbert symbol of the field, then they become unique. And those coverings were, um, were obtained by Steinberg and Matsumoto and Steinberg and, and, and Moore and Matsumoto. And the coverings of Bailinsky Delin agree with those for this set. And let me also denote by R either M if M is odd or M over 2. OK, so now um, the first thing to look at would be H. And here we are taking to RKC. And we will be looking at the M-fold covering of H. And the first thing we would like to verify is that using restriction, we will get a covering, the M-fold covering of G. Because that's what we're interested in studying. So it turns out that the embeddings, uh, the way defined here, do give you GM. And there is, there's a certain, for certain subgroups we have, uh, for certain subgroups and certain embeddings we have compatibility. These are very subtle, uh, subtle points, but we do get, uh, here we do get in, in those uh, copies of G, we can get the M-fold covering of, of, uh, of G, which is what we're interested in studying. So HM is, is, is the correct uh, place to start. And once we have that, of course, MP becomes GLRKC. And uh, now we turn to tau. So tau lives on a covering of GLK. And uh, we know that there are um, infinitely many uh, non-isomorphic coverings. Again, the, the covering is dictated by restriction. Let me denote it by M and R. It depends on both M and R. And it is not the Kajdan. Patterson covering, it's, it's a different one. Uh, Fan Gao has uh, recently Savin studied, uh, introduced it, observed it has some very convenient properties. And Fan Gao also in his works, that's a covering we work with. And Tau is, of course, now a genuine cuspidal representation of this covering. And we turn to the Spe. So now the Spe would be of GLRKC, the same covering. And here I have to be a bit careful because the construction, those of you who are familiar with the construction of the Spe, it depends on, uh, you have to compute the constant term and then you see L functions, global L functions, and you have to know also some information about, about the local places. Here we have to, at this point, rely on some conjectures. So we know that this representation exists when R equals two, which is either M is one that's a linear case or the double cover. And they are also known when K equals one. But granted we have the Schper representation, let me proceed so we can take the section. And uh, yeah, so I think I, I missed, I missed one point uh, I already missed one point in the definition, right? Yeah. So these are the things that happen with coverings. You have to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, so tau is a cuspular representation of GLK, means that somehow we have an embedding of GLKF because we are looking at automorphic representations. And as, as I highlighted uh, before, this is by no means canonical. OK, so we have to make sure we keep this. Uh, it does not change throughout the construction. So let me continue again. So we form the uh, Sperr representation, and we take f. And uh, now we can construct the Eisenstein here. So instead of, and this, of course, means I have hf in, oh, I should write it here. But this is canonical, so that's easier. So I'm writing the splitting here. So the Eisenstein series changes. And now, what else? Uh, of course, here, instead of k minus 1, we have rk minus 1. And because 
the covering is split canonically over unipotent subgroups, we have the same notion of a character. So of course we can discuss Fourier coefficients, but now we turn to the embedding. So we have two copies, E1G and E2G, and as I said before, we have coverings by restriction, and the computation will tell you that those coverings are isomorphic, but you have to choose some isomorphism, which is, again, canonical, but you still have to choose it. So if you start, you see, I have one cuspidal representation of GM. I have to, I can take this copy or that copy, but in the construction, I will have to work with both. So, for example, if we take phi1 and phi2 here, when the covering is realized here, then we have to pull back, uh, say, phi1 here. And it turns out that The, uh, that those factors do commute uh, in the covering, and we have an embedding with a certain small quotient, epsilon 1 equals epsilon 2. No, they don't say, the, but they don't say that. They say something. They say something a bit different. So canonical would mean. Thanks for asking. Canonical would mean that if you have somehow conjugation, and say you you conjugate, you have your H. I used gamma, so let me keep gamma, and you have that. So you are looking at the conjugation of, uh, say, H F. So so gamma varies over. HF. Canonical would mean that, that you can write an equality like that. Gamma G, a G gamma. Okay. And, and this is indeed true, and it fall, I mean, if you know that HF is perfect, then you're fine, this is correct. If not, then what you get is something else you get some uh, G gamma times, well, whatever you had, and some, some uh, one core chain uh, alpha, alpha of gamma. So how do you know that? Okay, so to relate between the two, you have to know. Okay, what Bailinsky didn't tell you is that you can fix some, you can, you can say, name it, okay? But it doesn't mean it's gone. And the same, of course, uh, the same problem occurs locally with uh, the maximal compact uh, hyperspecial uh, subgroup, usually denoted by K over uh, almost uh, at almost uh, all places. Okay, so um, once we have that, let me see. Okay, as I said before, we can define the Fourier coefficient, which I would like it to be an automorphic function on the image here, but observe that now we already have three different definitions of GF. One for this copy, one for that, and one in H. They are all compatible, we have to check. The uniqueness gets you that more or less, but you have to check. So once we have that, we can write The global integral <laughs> 
and and what am I missing now? What are we hiding under the rug? Yes, so we are hiding the iota. Okay, so um, iota is unfortunate. So as I said, G acts on, on the covering, but uh, iota is not in G. So iota is an outer involution. So we still have to extend it, and, and we can do it. But again, once you extend, you're going to ask, okay, first it's, it's not immediate that you have a lift, but you do, and you have local and global, and you have to prove that it lifts to an involution. And thankfully, it is unique. Again, because the goof is perfect. So once we have that, we have finally, this takes more, this takes, to do all that, took more than the linear paper, paper with everything, the, the whole construction and folding. Uh, just to do that is about 60 pages. Uh, Okay, so once we have that, we can write the unfolding, and as usual, for uh, in a right half plane, we can obtain Ls times integrals local places. We don't, at present, we don't have a full Euler product. So what is this L function? How is it defined? For now, I will just say that it is either, uh, okay, so and for GLK, the covering we work with, I, I used M and R, it is always so this is what uh, Weizmann uh, works. Uh, you can see it in one way. I, I, I saw it in one way. Lee's, uh, one of his uh, preprints, uh, the precise computation of uh, those uh, L groups. So using that, you can define uh, the partial, the, the restricted L function. And after all that, the only thing we can say in theory at present is that the L function is meromorphic, which is again, just as it was in the linear case, already known by the, Lang the, the extension of the Langlands constant term method uh, for covering groups. Uh, this was done by Gao, based on the Gindikin Kapilevich formula. However, this construction gives you, will give you once more, uh, much more, because once we understand the local integrals, then we can obtain, as before, a complete L function with a functional equation. And then we should be able to reproduce the original work of Shimura I know the, uh, at least two students of Shimura here. So Shimura studied modular forms of half integral weight, and he described the lift from k over 2, odd k, to k minus 1. He did this by extending Rankine's integral representation from 39, and he used Vail's converse theorem. So this is, this is uh, how, how we obtain functoriality in the linear case. And we expect the same to work here. So what happens, what breaks down with the, uh, in the globally generic he, uh, case here, you would, your next choice would be to apply uh, the method of local coefficients. But as we know, of course, this will work for globally generic or non-globally generic representations. But when you work with globally generic representations for coverings, you don't have uniqueness. You 
which means that the local coefficients method breaks down, even though now there is a recent effort by, uh, by Gao and Shahidi and, and Spruch to define instead of, uh, to extend the method of local coefficient of uh, local coefficients to what they call a, a local um, a matrix of local coefficients or a local local coefficients matrix. But let me just let me just underline that. Um, the main difference is we do have uniqueness at all the unramified places already. So we do have a definition of gamma, well, at the unramified place, we have a definition using proportionality factors. And of course, um, I'm running out of time, so let me just take one more minute and mention that uh, the case, your, the work of course started uh, with coverings of SL2, the double coverings of, uh, the double cover of SL2, uh, where well, Valls Bourget obtained uh, and the theta correspondence. And uh, only recently, this was extended to, uh, to SP, uh, SPC, again, double cover by uh, Gunn and Savin, and now th that was over Piadic fields in 2012, and now I understand there's a recent uh, global, so some global results towards a correspondence were proved by, in a paper by Gan Gross and Prasad, and now there's a work of Gan and Ichino again uh, on, on this, uh, these topics. So uh, that's, uh, that's everything. Thanks.